function. So if you do not want to be recorded, you are welcome to um, disconnect. You are also welcome to, one thing we've learned is that the recording only works visually. It only shows your face when you're speaking. So if you're mute and you don't ask questions, you will not be visible in the recording if that's a concern to you. Um, and then we'll post this on the website. So if anybody um, misses tonight and needs the information, it will be there. Okay. Okay. Um, so we're good to go. I think we still have people coming in, but um, Michelle will catch them. I'm going to share my screen and go over a presentation that I put online. Um, and then I've got some additional information as well. So. Okay, we put together this presentation for families. Your um, sixth graders, if you have a sixth grade kid, um, they got some presentations in their online classes today. Um, information that they need to know. This is our information that um, families need to know. We did post this a couple of days ago. So if you've already gone through it, yay. And I'm sorry that you have to go through it again with me. Um, and if you haven't gone through it, no problem. We're gonna go through it all together. Okay. Uh, so it starts with what families need to know about Fern Ridge Middle School. I'm just going to check. Okay. Um, so first thing you wanted to know is that sixth grade starts Thursday and Friday and seventh and eighth grade start next week, Thursday and Friday. Um, your kids have been divided into A groups or B groups. Um, generally, depending upon where they live is how that decision was made. Um, and so A goes Tuesday and Thursdays and B goes Wednesdays and Fridays. So middle school kids will start, I mean, sorry, sixth grade kids will start Thursday and then they'll just keep going. And then the seventh and eighth graders join us next week. The sixth graders will have a um, day of orientation this week. It'll be mostly focused on kind of our traditional Welcome to Fernridge Middle School orientation. And then we'll settle down to more academic stuff with the sixth graders next week. So, and I talk fast normally, and I talk even faster when I get nervous. So if I'm talking too fast, just um, say something in the chat and, and Mrs. Marshall will yell at me. Um, so here we go, doors open at eight o'clock. Um, we're not letting kids into the building before school starts or before eight o'clock. In the past, we've had this little room in the front and we've let kids in to hang out before, like, and we're not, do, we, we're not able to do that this year. So doors open at eight o'clock. First period will be at 825. Dismissal, the end of the day is 305. That is a couple of minutes earlier than we finished last year. So, so what does hybrid mean? Um, hybrid means that students will attend school two days a week and then they will work from home two days a week. So students in the A block attend Tuesdays, Thursdays, B block, Wednesdays, Fridays. Um, on their at-home days, students will get into Google Classroom. They'll check in, they'll access their classwork for that day. They'll have to answer an attendance question and um, they will uh, do their work, whatever the work is that the teacher has put in for that. Um, there's no schedule on the um, at-home days. So uh, there's no specific time they have to be in any class. So they can do it in what order they ever order they want. You know, it's up to them. There will be a time and we will post this that there'll be help available. So we will have um, a, an open Zoom drop-in tutoring time. So if your kids are working on something there will be a staff member that they can call and ask questions of. It won't be their teacher because odds are their teacher is teaching the kids who are in the building, but it will be a teacher and they will be able to answer if they get stuck on a problem or they need extra help or something like that. Um, and that will most likely occur in the afternoon. We're, we'll get definitive times out, but I'm thinking it's going to be one like 1230 or something like that is the time. Um, so. And let's see. 
Uh, why are we doing hybrid? Um, we are required to have 35 square feet per student in each classroom. Um, our class sizes will average around 15. A lot of that is just because the physical space. Uh, those of you who are sixth grade parents may not have come to our school before. Um, we hope that you will soon at some point have the opportunity to. Um, but we have some a um, little bit smaller class sizes of classes in uh, rooms one through eight. They're just physically smaller class, size, class sizes or room sizes. Um, so we don't have the physical space to have all students in the building and keep to that 35 square feet guideline and social distance like we want to. So we stagger the schedule. We put half the kids in and half the kids um, in the other, half the kids on A days, half the kids on B days. It allows us to make sure everybody is safe on the day that they're in school. So, um, so yes, A students attend Tuesdays, Thursdays, B students attend Wednesdays and Fridays. And nobody comes to school on Monday because it's a teacher work day. I'm gonna continue. Cohorting. Um, one of the other requirements that we have under the guidance we're working on, which is called Ready Schools Safe Learners, um, is that kids cohort. So they, they stay in the same group as much as we can keep them in the same group. So that one student is not mixing with a high number of kids. Um, so your child, when they come to school, will stay in the same classroom except for PE and um, lunch. And then the teachers are going to rotate around those classrooms. So um, there'll be a cohort classroom. They will stay in that same spot. The teachers will rotate and move around. Uh, it, yeah, and there'll be spaced, physical space, physical distancing in that classroom as well. So, okay. Uh, a couple of words about masks. Uh, kids must wear masks. They must be worn at all times, um, whether they're inside or outside, even during PE, they have to be worn. Um, the one exception is if they're eating. Uh, face masks must be worn correctly. They cover the nose, the mouth, and the chin. And there's, we ask that face masks meet our dress code, which means that they don't promote drugs, alcohol, violence. Um, you can get face masks these days with just about anything, not those things for the um, middle school, please. Um, we like face masks that, you know, a face mask that, said that has a Hello Kitty on it would be fine, but um, they have to meet that. Um, dress code. Face masks that have Baby Yoda on them would be even better than face masks that have Hello Kitty on them. Um, but yes, no drugs, no alcohol, no violence, no problem. They can wear gaiters. The gaiter must be double layered um, and either folded or made of a double layer material. And if your child doesn't have a mask, don't worry about it. We have plenty here for them at school. Um, and we will give them a mask. If, and if they forget theirs, we will give them one when they get here. So um, social distancing, all students and staff will be required to social distance at all times and keep six feet between them to the maximum extent possible. And again, this includes lunch, PE, outside or on the bus. A uh, couple of health reminders. Hey, I think we say this every year, but we really mean it this year. Please don't send your kids to school if they are sick. Um, students will be screened as they enter the building. If they'll be visually and verbally screened. If they look sick or they report being sick, they will be um, removed, rerouted, sent to a waiting room and will kind of like a big health room and we will check up on them and we'll more than likely call parents to come and get them. So um, that's kind of what we're doing. Um, make sure your contact information and your emergency contacts are current. And if we can keep kids uh, from coming to school sick and we can make sure our kids are healthy and our kids who are sick, we take care of them. We can all work together and stay open. And stay open safely for everybody. So um, got 
Um, just some general symptoms that you guys probably already know this. Temperature greater than 100. They have a new or worsening cough, shortness of breath, and any other general symptoms. Um, please keep them home. Uh, on their at-home days, they will have what we call as applied learning, which is working at home on assignments. In general, the teachers will take a few minutes at the end of each class to kind of go over what the assignment is for the next day, make sure the students understand it, where to find it in Google Classroom. Um, most of our kids are becoming experts in Google Classroom and they will be more than, I mean, they manipulate, they find things, they turn things in. It's, you do have to take attendance questions. Um, that has to be answered every day. And that's how we will take attendance. We are required by the state to take attendance on the at-home dates. So um, kids need to get in there and answer the attendance question, uh, which will be in the Google Classroom. So, okay. Um, other changes, no lockers. Students can take their backpacks into their classrooms this year. So we usually don't allow backpacks in classrooms. This year we are, and we usually have lockers and this year we don't. So the world is turning upside down on us. Um, but yes, no lockers, students can take their backpacks into their classroom. We can't have parents or visitors or volunteers in the building. No bus passes, this is an important one. Um, if your child, Normally, if you want your child to go home with somebody different um, to a friend's house or something like that, it's not going to happen this year um, unless it's an, like an emergency situation. But um, we are required, the buses have their own set of guidelines and they are required to cohort on the bus. They are required to social distance on the bus and they will have assigned seats on the bus. So um, yeah, bus, no bus passes, please. Students must have um, their name on it. The drinking fountains will be open so students can bring a water bottle from home and fill it. Um, they'll probably wanna make sure they fill it in the morning before they come to school. So, uh, more changes. Students will not eat breakfast at school. This includes the first day of school. Um, so um, no breakfast. So make sure your, your child has breakfast at home. Um, they will be given to go home with them a sack that has two breakfasts in it, one for the next at home day and one for the next school day. Um, students, school breakfast and lunch will continue to be free. They will continue to provide meals and food pickups at the high school the way they, they have been um, throughout this. So um, we will not be sending home a lunch but you're, for the off days, but you are more than welcome to get a lunch um, and pick one up at the high school um, doing the lunch pickups. And, and on Mondays, they'll still have the week of food. Um, we'll not have access to a microwave at lunch. And at this time, there's no snack bar. Um, so. Oh. Again, um, we're not opening any part of the building until 8 a.m. Buses will uh, not arrive before 8 a.m. and we encourage parents to drop off closer to the 8.20, um, 8.15, 8.20 time. Um, we, and like I said, in the past, we've had a front entry room for students to rate in, but we have to close that um, this year. Students waiting outside for school to open must socially distance and wear masks. Uh, for all students, um, today, the sixth graders should have had a lot of training in what it, it's going to look like and what the protocols are going to be. Seventh and eighth graders will get that training next week. Um, the first day back for sixth graders is basically going to be a day of orientation. We know that this is a lot of change um, and it's a lot of change for the kids, a lot of new protocols, a lot of new rules, a lot of new requirements, and we are committed to um, helping the kids to be successful in this new protocol. So that means that we're going to continuously go back over these things and remind and we educate and we train kids on how to follow these new guidelines. So it's not just going to be a one day orientation. It's probably going to be a little bit of every day 
that goes on. Um, so, because there's a lot to remember and there's a lot to learn. Um, oh, yeah. um, we're committed to your children. Um, we know these are a lot of changes. We can pull it together. We can make it work. And our goal is to make Fern Ridge Middle School a student-centered environment to continue to actively engage students in learning and still keep our students and staff safe. A couple of things that were not on the slide show. Um, students do not have to bring their Chromebooks to school. Um, they will not have a gym locker, but they will still participate in PE. So we, they don't have to dress into a, a PE shirt or a PE outfit, um, but we do ask that they wear clothes that are comfortable to move around in, shoes that are comfortable to jump up and down in um, when they come to school, because they will be participating in PE. They will not be dressing down for PE. Um, students cannot bring their cell phones into the classroom. If it's gotta be in their backpack and stay in their backpack, they can have their cell phones at lunch. There's no problem there. Um, we're going to be eating in two areas. So um, eating in the commons and eating in a modified eating area in the rate room because we have a limit to how many kids can eat lunch at one time. So um, because of social distancing and cohorting. So let's see. Students cannot bring balls to school. I, in the past, kids have... Um, wanted to bring like their own soccer ball or their own basketball. And this year they cannot do that. So I think I'm asking a lot. Um, so let me, uh, let me um, go through and answer some of these questions that are in the, um, uh, unless, Ruth, can you think of anything I haven't mentioned? Nope, okay. Callie, can you think of anything I haven't mentioned? Well, I did put a question in the chat. Oh, well, I guess I will answer your question, Callie. Uh, Mrs. Marshall, can you think of anything I haven't mentioned? Yeah, um, this presentation is on the website. This recording of this um, Q&A will be on the website as well. So if I've overwhelmed you tonight, I'm sorry. Um, if you have a question, you wake up in the middle of the night and you have a question, write it down, give us a call in the morning and we'd be happy to answer anything at any time. Uh, if you wake up in the middle of the night and you wanna email me the question, that works too. Um, so yes, A students, Tuesdays and Thursdays, B students, Wednesdays and Fridays, electives. So you may notice that your child is going from five periods to six periods. That additional class is an elective class. Um, it is um, more of a selective than an elective because we can't break the kids up into cohorts. We, I mean, we can't break the kids up into groups. We can't send the kids who wanna play band off to the band rooms. Um, so the elective is being selected for that whole cohort and whatever it is, that cohort will have the same elective. Um, we will be rotating electives around so they're not gonna be in the same elective for that long, but they will have um, the same elective. It will be, uh, sixth grade, for example, is wellness, reading, and IXL math. Um, and then eighth grade, I believe, is chess, um, Oregon field guide. Some of the same electives as we've had that were in the forecasting sheets, but um, more, less choice. Uh, we just couldn't give the kids a choice. We couldn't um, mix them um, around the cohorts. If your kid wants um, band, I should say this, next year our plan is to have a seventh grade band one class and an eighth grade band one class. So um, we really encourage band, learning an instrument is incredibly powerful for kids. And we wanna make sure our current sixth graders who didn't get that opportunity will have the opportunity to have a band one class next year. Um, and we will also for our current seventh graders who didn't get the band two class, they will have an opportunity to take a band two class next year as well. So um, we just, there were, uh, um, as you can imagine, um, a lot of guidelines and restrictions around 
a choir class happening or a music band class happening. So um, we opted in other directions. So um, at some point, so Callie um, was asking about tardies for first period. And at some point, um, yes, but probably not for a while because it's like normally what in a normal school year, there's not a tardy for the first period for a couple of weeks um, because we know kids are learning where their classroom is. They're learning um, all kinds of things and um, they're not always on time in those first couple of weeks. And we understand that this year, especially because we're gonna be screening students at the door and we don't know yet until we do it we don't know how long that screening is going to take um so we'll be flexible as well um and students will have to report directly to their classroom um in the morning they don't they no going to the gym no hanging out in the commons it's come in and head to your classroom and in your classroom, the teacher may have some fun things for to do or some hanging out kinds of things, but um, not in the commons and not in the gym. Okay. Um, most of our students are gonna be in the same classes with the same kids they're in the class with now. So that online class um, is going is right now has A and B students in it. So the A kids in that online class will go into an A group and the B kids will go into a B group. So the kids that are, are going in your child's class now are mostly going to be the same ones who are in your class. Um, so, and no, we don't have a class list of um, that. Um, but um, it's, except for whether or not they're A or B, it'll be the same kids. Um, can I interrupt for a second, Olivia? Yeah. Um, and What's helped is that in English for sixth grade, uh, Ms. Hanstein has already like divided the kids in like a breakout room of like, hey, here's an, an A breakout room group, here's a B breakout room group. So the kids could like know who's gonna be in their group once they meet live. Um, and, I, and I'm thinking that seventh and eighth grade is gonna practice that too. So yeah. the kids should have had practice with that um, this past week or last week, just so that they know. Yeah, and some of the other teachers and other subjects are doing similar kinds of things. So, um, but thank you, Ruth. Um, bus schedules was just posted to the website. Um, that came out this afternoon. It's on the main district page and it's on the school page. If you have um, difficulty figuring it out, somebody had um, a phone call from someone who couldn't find their um, address on it, I would really suggest you call the bus barn because there's been changes, um, they can help you um, read the bus schedule. Um, did I pass it already? Okay, hang on. Um, another one about who is in the class. Uh, students will be going to the bathroom, yeah. Um, so a question about the bathrooms, we're hopefully generally going to have the sixth and seventh graders use the bathroom up here and the eighth graders use the bathroom by the commons. We're not gonna restrict um, access. Kids will have to ask for permission. Um, they'll have to get a hall pass, but um, their teachers will let them go out to the and all that. They just have to ask. Okay. Eighth grade teachers, um, so Landon Hughes, eighth, okay. eighth grade teachers are, are the, haven't really changed. They're the same ones that were eighth grade teachers last year. Uh, Mrs. Larson is our language arts. Uh, Mr. Humphrey is doing math. Mr. Stowe is doing science. Uh, we do have a new PE teacher, Mr. Newman. He's doing PE. And Mr. Davis is still doing social science. So essentially your teachers are gonna be the same ones you've had online. Um, it, we may add another class in there someplace, but we're not changing who your social studies teacher is, who your science teacher is, who your math teacher is, um, unless for some reason we've 
yeah um i can't think of a reason why we would have and if we do we'll 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 let you know and i think too, sorry to interrupt i think too that it would be um for exploratory you're going to have just the same teacher twice yeah the, explor the same the exploratory teachers are going to be your eighth grade team of teachers so um let's see can I interrupt it as well? Yeah. Um, I saw that somebody was asking about the lunches up above. I know you talked yep. about getting the breakfast, but I don't believe you talked about getting the hot lunches. So in the, all the, the ways uh, the lunch program is set up this year, um, kids come in, they socially distance, they stand in line, they get a lunch. In that lunch bag is a hot entree all the condiments they need, all the silverware they need, everything in just one bag and they pick up the bag and they pick up the milk and they go sit down. Um, there's not choices. So they won't be able to choose between pizza and a hamburger and the main entree, but there will be a hot entree um, for every student. And then the cold lunches will be available for them to pick up uh, for families who need who want to pick them up at the high school. It is the high school, right, Michelle? At the high school and the, during the day or um, at the Monday, if you order them, you can get a week of meals on Monday evenings. So for your at home days, we are not providing a lunch. We are only providing a breakfast for the kids to take home, but families can still pick up at the high school. Families can still pick up on Monday evenings. Yeah, and there's only one hot lunch choice. So, um, bus schedule is posted on the website and the, again on the um, both the middle school website and the district website. I think we talked about the kid, it's gonna be the same kids in their classes and um, many of the teachers are dividing them into A and B groups so they get to know each other a little bit. Um, and know who's in there, but um, hopefully they are, they they know who's in there. Let me see what other questions. Um, oh, the menu is going to be on the on the website under food services. The menu will be posted for the middle school, so you can look and see um, who is there. Uh, generally speaking, um, the elective is going to be added to second period um so a master schedule is posted on the website and in a second i'll stop sharing my screen and show you guys where to find this um, information um so they'll have a break at lunch and then um the teachers are will will be giving them like um small breaks brain breaks during the school day uh, the kids to sign in at the same time in the morning. Kids do not have to follow a schedule for the at-home days. So the question was, on the at-home days, are the kids signing in at the same time in the morning as they are now? There is no schedule for the at-home days. They have to make sure they sign into all of their classes. They do not have to do them in a specific order um, as long as they sign in at a certain time. Not even a certain time, I'm sorry, as long as they sign in to everything. Uh, I just add to that really quick. Yeah. There's no Zoom on the days that they're at home. Yeah, there is no, well, the only Zoom available on the days that they're at home is the Q&A question tutoring drop-in time um, that will be available. So um, the students will be told what classroom they are in by their um, distance learning, in their distance learning classes. Today and tomorrow, they were. some of them were told, tomorrow more than will be told. Next week, seventh and eighth graders will know what room they're in and we'll tell them as they come in. Um, and they'll be in that room the whole day. Um, 504's IEP is absolutely being followed just like they um, are being followed during distance learning. And the kids will have the same normal general lunchtime it's about 32 minutes, I think it is. Um, and 
Okay, well, there's, I think that was the last question. So let me just show you. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna stop sharing. There we go. Okay. Um, oh, actually, I want to share, but hang on. Okay. Can you guys all see the website? Oh, you don't want to see my home screen. It's very too messy. Let's see, let's do this again. Okay, is that the website? Okay, so if you go to the school, to the district website, you head down to Fernwich Middle School. Um, bus routes are here. Um, the Q&A will also, when we, after we post the recording, it will be posted here as well. If you look over here, um, this is where the, a presentation that I just posted is what families need to know about Fernwich Middle School hybrid. We have a, a modified supply list here. And then a time schedule that says when each class is first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. And probably what you really want is the hybrid master schedule here, which um, there's one for sixth, one for seventh, one for eighth, which tells you, actually tells you the room and tells you the classes if you know what cohort. So if you know your first period teacher, you should find, like if you're a sixth grader and your first period teacher is Ms. Davis, then this is your cohort here and you just follow it all the way down. Your second period class is Ms. Bazola, then you have lunch, social studies, PE, language arts, and then your exploratory is right there. To, that's your starting exploratory um, at the end of the day. And seventh period, if you know your first teacher period teacher is Mr. Light, he's here, you would just follow that all the way down. Okay, so that's um, there for you. Okay, let's see, let me stop sharing. Uh, okay, uh, water bottles can be refilled. Um, they just have to be refilled at the drinking water, drinking um, fountain. But you know, you're welcome to bring a water bottle and fill it at home, and it can be a bigger one. Um, it's fine with us. Um, but yes, there'll be an opportunity to refill it at lunch um, and before that if they need to. So, any other questions? Okay, like I said um, over and um, before, is please, if you have questions and you think of them tonight or you didn't get something answered, give us a call, give us an email. Um, we're here to answer and we, we really want you to know as much as we know about what that first day is so that you're assured we're gonna be handling it safely and appropriately and the kids are gonna have a great time. Um, but also you can help prepare your child um, and we can just get back to school and we so looking forward to being back in school. Um, we have missed the kids every single minute of every single day. And um, I know that um, the teachers are just beyond words excited for school to start and to have the kids. Um, it'll be a fabulous, fantastic thing. And we thank you again for trusting us with your children. Um, we know that that is a huge honor and we work every single day to live up to that honor. Um, especially in these times, you're trusting us to keep your child safe and we will do everything absolutely that we can um, to make sure that we are operating safely um, and educating children and um, building self-esteem and just, you know, giving them what they need to be successful, amazing adults that they're going to be. So 
Okay, any other questions? And it's okay if I, I realize that Michelle probably muted all of you, but if you want to unmute yourself and ask a question, I promise I will not let Michelle mute you again if you want to unmute yourself and ask a question. Shell, keep off that mute button. Uh, I feel like you just totally threw me under the bus. I've been here supporting you all night. I did just totally throw you under the bus. Um, but yes, does anybody have any questions either in the chat or? Um, uh Olivia, I have a question. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, if, if our kids are on the B block mm -hmm. and, and um, they're on their eighth graders, does that mean they are done with school this Friday and then they don't go back to school till next Friday? No, it means they would come back to school on Wednesday, the following Wednesday. But I thought school doesn't start till the fourth and fifth. Your kids are eighth graders? Correct. So they don't start till the fourth and the fifth. So they would come on the fifth, which fifth. is March Friday. Yeah. And then they would come back on the following Wednesday. Okay. That's I just want to make sure. Like it's basically a week off. I just want to make sure that's correct. Not, it's not like five days. But yeah. but aren't they still doing distance learning the whole time? Well, that's what I'm. That's what I'm trying to understand. Do they, do they do? So for the next until the fourth and fifth, seventh and eighth graders should be doing distance learning. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. So they will do distance learning Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then come back to in-person school on Friday. Right. Uh, they won't be doing distance learning on Thursday. They'll be. They'll have their first B day. Um, their first uh, at-home B day on Thursday. Did we just on totally Thursday. confuse you, Abby? <laughs> Maybe a little. So, okay. so at, the end of distance, at the end of distance learning on Wednesday, the teachers will have given your child an assignment. Everything will be posted in Google Classroom for them to work at home on Thursday because they are a B student and Thursdays are their, B, are their at home days. And so the second and the third, they would be in a Zoom class yes. with distance learning. Okay. Yes. Okay. But the fourth, they will not. Okay. I might type all that up and put it on the website so everybody understands it. I do think, I mean, in talking to other parents, I think we all kind of thought what I was thinking. So that's good to know what you're, yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. So do you know if that's the same for the whole district, for the high school as well? Yes. Probably. Okay. Um, okay. And, well, ninth grade starts. I want to say the ninth grade is. Don't they start Tuesday, Wednesday? Yes. So ninth grade starts Tuesday, Wednesday of the first, the second, and the third. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Like we couldn't confuse you anymore if we tried, right? No, um, you actually, that makes more sense. That helps because, um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I will put a calendar or something on our website that, that, lays it all out for you in black and white. Um, that would be perfect. That'd be perfect. So, yeah, I'm fairly sure you're probably not, like you said, you're, you're not the only um, parent who's confused by it. Um, I imagine you're probably not the only, I have people on staff who are confused by it. All of this is <laughs> kind of brand new and confusing to all of us, right? Yeah, no, so. no, totally understandable. So. Okay, any other questions? Okay. I'm not hearing any and I'm not seeing any. You guys are amazing. Thank you for being patient with us as we went through this year. Um, just like I said, glad to have the kids back and um, looking forward to the day that they are all back in the building all the time. But in the meantime, we'll take two days a week and celebrate that. So thank you. Um, and I think that's it. If you have questions, email, call. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you, Callie. Thank you, Michelle, um, for all of your help. So have a nice evening.